I've got a little something to show you. It's the M4 Pocket Charger from Toolkit RC. Today I'll go over what this small, handy, inexpensive, yet capable Toolkit RC M4 Pocket Charger can do. As a bonus, we'll also take a look at the utility of this Toolkit RC SC100 protocol cable. If you've got a smartphone and or wall charger that uses one of those fast protocols like power delivery or quick charge, you're going to want to see this. If you're familiar with the channel, you know I fly micro FPV quadcopters from whoops through those that spin two to four inch props. In my opinion, that's where this little Toolkit RC M4 pocket charger really shines. You see, each one of those quads uses a LiPo battery anywhere from 2S to 4S, such as these with a 520 milliamp hour capacity to 1100 milliamp hours. That's right in the sweet spot for this Toolkit RC M4 pocket charger. It's got a max four cell capacity and is advertised as being 1S capable. However, to charge each 1S LiPo, you need to fashion an adapter with a balance lead on it since the M4 Pocket needs to see the voltage from both the main lead and the balance connector on the battery in order to operate. So 1S charging isn't its strong point. Let me show you all the strong points in my opinion it does have. First, besides being tiny, which makes it very mobile, and inexpensive, which makes it very affordable, the M4 Pocket Charger charges a bunch of different battery types. It can charge regular LiPo batteries, high voltage or HV batteries, LIFE batteries, and although not advertised, I'll even show you a trick I use to charge lithium ion batteries with the M4 pocket charger. The batteries you charge can either have an XT30 connector or an XT60 connector. You simply slide this little door to expose the type of connector you want to use. The M4 pocket can take any DC power source from seven to 25 volts with this XT60 connector or just slide this little door and you can also use a power source with a USB-C connector. If you've got one of these inexpensive XT30 to XT60 adapters, which I've got linked to in the video description below, you can even use a power source with an XT30 connector, such as any of these I've shown here with an XT30 connector. Let me demonstrate both the M4 Pocket Charger's capabilities and simplicity. I'll start by charging one of the batteries I use most often with my micro quads, a GMB 4S 650 milliamp hour high voltage battery. These along with the RDQ 4S 850s and the GMB 4S 1100s have the highest capacity to weight ratios as shown and explained on my TMAC FPV site. It basically just means that they're very efficient for their weight. To use the M4 Pocket, we go to the quick start section of the user manual, which I've got linked to in the video description below. We connect a 7 to 25 volt power source. To demonstrate how you can use it to charge in the field for this demo, I could use a large LiPo battery with an XT60 connector, a goggles battery with an XT60 connector, a transmitter battery with an XT30 connector, and the cheap XT30 to XT60 adapter I showed earlier, or even a large lithium ion battery with an XT30 using the same inexpensive XT30 to XT60 adapter. I'll go ahead and use this lithium ion one for now. So let's go ahead and connect that. Now with the power source connected, the M4 Pocket boots up and shows the main interface. Up top, you'll see the input voltage of the power source, the charger's temperature, and I've found when the charger gets to about 47 degrees Celsius, the internal fan kicks on to vent the heat and cool it down. Over here to the left, you'll see how long your battery's been charging for when we've got one connected. You'll notice it says lock to begin with. That's just a safety feature to remind you that you need to set both the charging cutoff voltage and the input current. So to unlock it, we short press this button. By the way, this is the only button on the M4 Pocket Charger and there's only four functions to it. For any of these functions, you either short press the button or long press it. Short press it initially to unlock the main screen like we just did. Short press it again to change the charging current from 1 amp to 2 amps to 3 amps or to 5 amps. Of note on page 11 of the user's manual for safe charging, you normally want to use an input amperage rate of 1 to 2 times the battery's capacity, which is known as 1C to 2C for LiPos 
and LIHV batteries. This means since the minimum input amperage for the M4 Pocket is 1 amp, I won't be charging any batteries with a capacity less than 500 milliamps. To change the charging cutoff voltage for your specific battery, you simply long press the button to cycle through 4.2 volts for a regular LiPo, 4.35 volts for a high voltage LiPo or LIHV, 3.85 volts for LiPo storage, or 3.6 volts for LIFE batteries. We just covered three of the four functions using this button. Let me demonstrate the fourth function. To get to it, we need to disconnect the power source. Then we hold this button down while we reconnect the power source, and a new screen appears. Its designed use according to the user's manual is to change the terminal voltage or cutoff voltage and manual calibration of the M4 charger if you need it. In my experience, the chargers come accurately calibrated from the factory, but you can change these numbers if you need to after you've used a voltage meter to measure the accurate cell voltages. I'm going to leave mine alone. However, I will change this LiPo cutoff voltage since I primarily use LIHV batteries and lithium ions. I'm going to change it from 4.2 volts to 4.15 volts. To do that, I press and hold this button and short press it to get to 4.15. Why? Well, 4.1 is the nominal cutoff voltage for a lithium ion battery at about 90% capacity. So with that set to 4.15 volts now, I can charge lithium ion batteries as long as I remember to use an input charging current of about half the capacity of the lithium ion pack, or one half C. This is different than LiPos. As I mentioned earlier, for LiPos you can use 1 to 2C. For lithium ions, it's recommended you use 1 half C. Now lithium ions today can normally be charged to their full 100% capacity of 4.2 volts using the normal LiPo setting. However, I cannot recommend that myself without you first confirming with your specific lithium ion battery's specification sheet for its max cutoff voltage. So for instance, if I were to charge this lithium ion pack with a capacity of 2600 milliamps or 2.6 amps, my amperage input charge rate should be one half of that or 1.3 amps or 1300 milliamps. And the closest setting the M4 Pocket has to 1.3 amps is one amp. So that would be the amperage rate I would use to charge this lithium ion 2600 milliamp hour battery. To get out of this calibration page, we'll disconnect the battery. Then we reconnect our power source. And going back to our main screen, we're charging this 4S 650 milliamp hour LIHV battery. So I'm going to select my output cutoff voltage to 4.35 volts, which it's already set at. Once again, to cycle through these cutoff voltages, after you unlock the screen by short pressing this button, you can press and hold the button and it'll cycle through the various cutoff voltages. We want 4.35 for this LIHV. And I'm going to select my input amperage to be as close as possible to one times the 650 milliamp hour capacity of the battery. And that's going to be one amp. Now that we've correctly set both the cutoff voltage for the battery type we have and the input charging current, we simply connect both the main and the balance leads of the battery to the Toolkit RC M4 pocket charger. Watch this. Once it detects that the voltages from the main port and the balance port match, it automatically starts charging. We didn't even have to hit a button. Here you'll notice the top bar now turns blue in color and the charging timer starts. This top bar will turn green once the battery is fully charged. You'll also see each of the individual's cell's voltages, the total battery voltage, the charging current, the accumulated capacity which has been charged. When done, you can use this number to calibrate your current meter in Betaflight as demonstrated in this video, which I have linked below. By calibrating your current meter, you could actually extend your flight times and also extend the life cycle of your battery. Over here, it also shows you the charging percent completion status. I've noticed this gets to 100% and the top bar turns green then about five minutes later, if you haven't disconnected the battery yet, you'll hear a short audible tone 
reminding you the battery is fully charged and you can disconnect it. So that's how this Toolkit RC M4 pocket charger can be used in the field to charge one of your batteries. Let me show you some other input power sources you can use with this Toolkit RC M4 pocket charger. Earlier I mentioned this Toolkit RC protocol XT60 to USB-C adapter cable. It's called the Toolkit RC SC100. It's a smart cable with power delivery and quick charge compatibility. So it's got a max output current of 5 amps at 20 volts for max output power of 100 watts. With this, if you don't happen to have a USB-C to USB-C power delivery cable, no worries. This has got you covered. Simply connect the USB-C end to your wall phone charger, slide the door on your Toolkit RC M4 pocket charger to expose the XT60 connector, plug the connector in, and once again you're up and running. That's one way to use the SC100 protocol cable on the power source side. Of course, you can plug the XT60 in into any battery charger with an XT60 power input. You can also use the SC100 cable and the M4 pocket charger to power your phone or just about any other type of mobile device. In this case, just plug in a battery as a power source to the output side of the M4 pocket with the main lead. And in this case, I'm going to also plug in the balance lead just so that you can monitor the individual cell voltages and watch them decrease as the mobile device is being charged. Then plug in the XT60 end of your SC100 into the input side of the M4 pocket by flipping this door and exposing the XT60 cable and the other end to your mobile device. And you're charging. Now whenever you connect a battery as your power source for charging, you want to make sure that the battery's voltage doesn't drop below its minimum safe value prior to damaging the battery. Just monitor it and disconnect your battery as the power source before it drains to its minimum safe voltage. You can also use your USB-C to USB-C cable to charge your mobile device in the same manner by connecting it to the input end of the M4 pocket charger and your mobile device. Let's go ahead and do that. Flip the door, connect the USB-C cable, and the other end to your mobile device. And once again, you're charging. It's very versatile. One more capability I want to demonstrate with this M4 pocket charger, since it's got the USB-C or the XT60 as a power source connection, we can charge our batteries from our car using one of the accessory outlets. Of course, check your vehicle's operator's manual for power limitations before you try this. I plug in the accessory outlet plug, which I've got linked below in the video description, and the Toolkit RC SC100 cable into the M4 pocket charger. Now before I plug it in on my vehicle, I'll just turn the ignition to ACC for accessories. Plug the USB-C side into the accessory outlet plug. Remember it's locked, so we need to short press the button to unlock it. And I'll be charging a 4S 850 milliamp hour LiPo from RDQ. It's actually a high voltage LiPo or an LIHV. So we want to make sure and set our cutoff voltage and our input amp charge rate correctly for the battery we're charging. Since it's an LIHV, I want it set to 4.35 and one amp. Then we just plug in the main lead and the balance connector like we did previously, and we're charging. This setup is so small, you can even throw it in a LiPo safe bag while charging, which is always a good idea. This M4 pocket charger and the SC100 cable make a great team. Well, those are a whole lot of capabilities for a small, mobile, affordable charger. I'd call that pocket power. That's going to do it for today. Make sure to hit that thumbs up button below and subscribe to continue your journey to better FPV fun, flights, and racing stuff. Thanks for your time. I'll catch you next video. Clear skies, friend.